Hello. My morning prayers this morning, I, um, I actually pondered on something that, uh, really quite interesting when I thought about it. I looked through my life and my conversations with people, my, um, understanding of things. And I noticed that, observed that there's two kinds of people that actually hear me, understand me, and um, believe the gospel that I preach. It's really strange. Um, I never really thought about it before, but I realized tonight. And then, you know, as few and far between as they are, <laughs> it's kind of wild when I think about it. But um, they, there's two kinds of people, and they pretty much... Um, it makes sense to me. There are those who know their Bible. They've read it through themselves and done research and really put their time and effort into understanding what's there for the same reasons I do, because I love God, not because I wanted to be smart. And then there are those people who have been broken so far down in life that they got, they had no other choice but to, to, to cry out to them. And those are the two kinds of people I find in my life that totally understand what it is I'm saying. I've noticed also that the people that usually attack and come against me are people themselves that have either little to no knowledge of the Bible or all the, all the knowledge that they have they gain from some church Bible study, something they learned as a kid in Bible study, uh, school, whatever, you know, Bible school, whatever. But I tend to see that the people that actually understand me are the ones that, as I said, they know their Bible fluently and they hear what I'm saying lines up or they've been broken like myself so far beyond recognition that they have no other choice but to hold on to something that's firm, you know. And when, when I looked around, at, at probably the deepest parts of my life, I looked around to other things that other people still offer me to this day. And then, you know, they'll come up in their debates and their arguments and, and offer me solutions that when I was at the point of the brink of my own destruction would have been laughable, you know, at best. Um, the only thing that could help me was an actual spiritual contact at those times in my life, you know. And I've been there several times over. And each time it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's a spiritual uh, contact. It's a spiritual happening that actually ends up stopping the whole process up, you know, keeping me safe. And, you know, that's what I say. And the, the, the motivation for why I would share this stuff online, really, um, you know, when I first came to this, I did have an introduction video. I got rid of all my videos those of you who've been with me know this, that I got rid of all my videos. Reasoning being is because somebody stepped up and called me a hypocrite and said that I was only pushing, putting this stuff up here to uh, stroke my own ego. So in order to, it wasn't so much to prove this guy wrong to him. It was in order to look at myself and say, okay, maybe he's right. So I trashed everything and I'm starting over on the premise that I'm being more realistic about what I am too. If you notice that a lot of these videos, I'm being more introspective and throwing up there what and who I am for real. I'm not trying to hold anything back. If I'm holding things back, if there are certain things I am holding back, it's just because you, no one needs to see the entirety of your sickness thrown up in online. But I'm not afraid to say that it's there. And that when I speak this gospel, I speak it out of the, as I said in the la uh, one of the last videos, I speak it out of the love that I have for the one who, when those experiences of feeling down and out and dragged through the mire and wanting to die happened, came to my rescue. You know, and I think of Jesus telling the parable of the great shepherd going out into the field and finding that one sheep that was freaking lost. You know, to me, I've been that lost sheep so many times. I'm a sick sheep. It's like, you know, you know how sheep herds are. Most people do. You know, they watch the Discovery Channel or Animal Planet. You know, the, the, the predators always go after the weak ones. And that's the ones that fall out of the herd, that fall behind. And I'm always that weak one. I've been sick all my life, you know, falling down, falling behind, getting picked up. The knowledge I have doesn't come from 
a lot of study. I mean, at least not a lot of study that I went out, you know, went to school or sat last and listened to a pastor. Most pastors in the world today, and I hate to say this because I don't like pointing my finger at other churches and saying this is what they're doing wrong, but most pastors in the world today are teaching people what their itching ears want to hear. Okay, Bible colleges, basically, you go to a Bible college set up by some church that teaches you how to present the truth in a way that has become, they have, that their crowd has become accustomed to hearing it in that way. And, and you must conform to the way in which they do things. And people tell me, oh, you got, you got to join a church and blah, 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 find a family. Well, it's true. I got to find a family, and I did. I am finding family. Few and far between, but I'm finding family. And I find more comfort in... Uh, exterior programs, if you will. I, I don't want to, it's hard for me to touch on. I've learned a few things, you know, I have a big mouth at times, but let's just say I do find a family and it's, it's not in the place that most Christians would go. In fact, most Christians would, most fundamentalists would call it ridiculous, but that's because as much as they know their Bible, they just don't know him, you know, because when you know him, you see him everywhere. You know he he's not contained to any one group. You know it's, it, it, the the strange thing about it is that when you know him, you can see him in everybody. You know I can even see him in the person slandering me. The problem with the person that's slandering me is he can't see him back. You know he would rather look at himself as superior because of my sickness or my issues or the things he chooses to attack me with. You know instead of going deeper into his own spirituality and understanding that seeing that part of me that's of him, of the true spiritual, and drawing that out, he would rather beat me for the things that I've done wrong, you know? And to me, that's not the essence of any kind of spiritual discipline that I know. I, I, I you know, I, I don't, even a Muslim, I don't believe a, Mus a true Muslim is practicing his spirituality by attacking other people. I don't believe that for a minute. You know, I, I and dare I say that uh, those people who are truly spiritual are not fighting over the worth of what flesh wants or needs. Flesh has nothing to do with spirit, nothing whatsoever. Flesh and spirit. How should I describe this? Flesh and spirit. Flesh is the car. Spirit is the driver. You know, I own my car. I drive my car but I am not my car, you know, in much the same manner. <sighs> my spirit, when I die, will be will be placed somewhere, you know. I'll either be connected and drawn back into my source, as Dr. Dyer calls it, you know, or because I have, um, I have allowed my spirit to be put into bondage and the body, when the body is cast away, then I will be stuck with it. And that... I think is what most Christians would call the hell that they preach, but they're really, that's the closest concept I can come up with. The idea that you can be trapped into a burning car and die is very realistic in the same manner that if you, if, if in your heart you have allowed yourself to get corrupted enough to not be able to free yourself, you're in bondage to your flesh. You know, addictions... You know, like addictions and sin are exactly the same thing in my eyes. I don't look at the, any difference. And exp why I see it this way is because they're both appetites of the flesh. You know, completely. Appetite of the flesh. Anything that's an appetite of the flesh gone awry is sin. You know, if the body is the temple of the spirit and the spirit is of God, then it just falls into reason that Anything that defiles the body is sin, you know? And if you continue to allow your body to be defiled, then you continue to be a sinner. And it doesn't matter whether it's an addiction, whether it's a sin, and everything, anything that's adverse to taking care of any temple anywhere, it means any body, any person. You know, when Jesus said, don't curse your brother, he's created in the image and likeness of God. There you go. It's the temple. You cannot blaspheme in these matters. And what's worse is blaspheming the very spirit, the core of a person. You know? Anyway, that's my time. Thank you.